Welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rom. And I am Sharon Weinstein. In our top story, Israel is slowly coming out of its third national lockdown due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Israeli Knesset approved the gradual opening of the country, but decided that Ben Gurion Airport will remain closed until at least February 20th. The nearly month-long closure of Israel's international airport is an attempt to stave off the further spread of the mutated strains of COVID-19 coming out of Great Britain, South Africa, and even California. The few Israelis who are allowed to return for extenuating circumstances are being transferred directly to quarantine hotels. Most students are expected to continue learning remotely while the Knesset considers plans of rotating elementary classes outdoors for towns with low infection rates. The inoculation campaign is moving ahead at full speed, and the antivirus injection has been made available to every citizen of Israel over the age of 16. And in some positive news, Israel's largest COVID-19 testing laboratory announced that it found evidence that the Pfizer vaccine drastically reduces the transmission of the virus. The lab reported a 60% reduction in viral load for subjects that had received both doses of the immunization. The International Criminal Court in The Hague has honed in on the Jewish state in what can only be described as an anti-Semitic witch hunt. The ICC declared that it is within its jurisdiction to probe the independent state of Israel regarding false allegations of war crimes committed against the Palestinians. This despite the fact that Israel is not a member of the ICC and that the Palestinians do not have a state. Lawsuits can potentially be filed against the Prime Minister of Israel, the Defense Minister, and even individual soldiers and their commanding officers, creating the possibility of their arrest if they travel abroad. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu decried the announcement, saying, the ICC outrageously claims that it is a war crime for Jews to live in our homeland. It also claims that when the democratic state of Israel defends itself against terrorists who murder our children and fire rockets on our cities, we are committing another war crime. Netanyahu pointed out that it is appalling that the same court established to prevent atrocities like the Nazi Holocaust against the Jewish people is now targeting the one Jewish state. The Biden administration has signaled that it will rejoin the biased and unscrupulous United Nations Human Rights Council. Former President Donald Trump withdrew from the organization in 2018 for its disproportionate focus on Israel, which received more condemnations than any other country. The organization became so corrupt that it allowed countries accused of the most heinous human rights abuses, such as China, Cuba, Venezuela, and Russia, to hold full membership with voting privileges. Despite publicly recognizing that the organization is flawed and in need of reform, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken announced that the United States will be rejoining the UNHRC. For now, the U.S. will hold observer status, but will seek to regain full membership at the upcoming vote in October. Iranian citizens who have suffered under the fanatic Islamic regime have appealed to the Biden administration not to re-enter the disastrous nuclear deal. Although starving and living with rolling blackouts under the economic collapse of their corrupt dictatorship, the people of Iran are pleading with President Biden to continue sanctions against the hardline Islamic Republic. The leader of the Iranian resistance movement recently told Fox News that Tehran is at its weakest point in its history and she pleaded with the Biden administration to hold Iran's leaders accountable for their egregious human rights violations. In a letter to Biden, Iranian dissidents urged the president to keep maintaining maximum political, diplomatic and financial pressure on Tehran. The letter says that the regime used sanctions relief and financial incentives provided by the Obama administration to export its totalitarian ideology by providing funds to terrorist networks, developing missile technology as offensive leverage to dominate the Persian Gulf and beyond, and cause chaos in the Middle East. 
the Iranian people have, on several occasions, attempted to rise up against the oppressive Islamic dictatorship, calling for democratic rule of law, freedom of speech, and equality for women. These protests were met with extreme force, and many of the dissidents were arrested, tortured, and ultimately hanged in public. Poland, the country that saw 3.5 million of their Jewish citizens murdered during World War II, has prosecuted two Holocaust historians for defamation. A Warsaw court ruled that the authors of the book, Night Without End, which describes in detail the complicity of Polish citizens in the genocide of Jews during the war, must publish an apology. The researchers vowed to appeal the decision. They view the case as an attempt to discredit their overall findings and discourage other historians from investigating the truth about Polish involvement in the mass murder of Jews. Poland is the only member of the European Union that has not passed restitution legislation for Jewish property seized during the Second World War. The Polish government adopted a law in 2018 making it a crime to accuse Poland of responsibility for the genocide. Warsaw claims the atrocities were committed by Nazi Germany on Polish soil. Holocaust survivors and historians say the defamation law threatens free speech and potentially whitewashes Poland's role in the genocide. And in a related story, a Polish journalist has been detained and questioned for an article she wrote calling on Polish authorities to admit that hostility towards Jews was widespread and that Polish complicity in the Holocaust is a historical fact. She's facing up to three years in prison for publicly insulting the nation of Poland. The United States Senate has overwhelmingly approved keeping the U.S. Embassy in the Israeli capital, Jerusalem. Back in 2017, former President Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital of the Jewish state. And in 2018, the United States Embassy was officially relocated to the Holy City. The status of the diplomatic mission was in question when the Biden administration made it clear that it would be reversing many of President Trump's positive policy changes regarding Israel. In a move solidifying Jerusalem's legitimacy in United States law, the Senate approved funding to keep the embassy in the Israeli capital by a vote of 97 to 3. Senators Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Tom Carper were the only lawmakers to vote against the measure. U.S. computer giant Intel has reported a record year in exports from the Jewish state. The chipmaker's Israeli branch noted a 14% increase over 2019's $6.6 billion, exporting a record $8 billion in 2020. Intel has invested its largest inventory outside the United States throughout Israel with about $7.8 billion of equipment and property assets. Intel is Israel's largest private tech employer with nearly 14,000 workers and it accounts for 14% of the Jewish state's tech exports and 2% of the national GDP. Israeli tech has also been a huge moneymaker for Intel. Mobileye, the Israeli startup it purchased back in 2017, reported a 10% growth last year, earning $967 million. An Israeli hospital claims that it may have found the cure for coronavirus. Researchers at Ichilov Hospital in Tel Aviv announced extremely positive results in preliminary trials for its COVID-19 cure. The medication, called ExoCD24, was given to patients suffering from moderate to severe cases of coronavirus. 95% of the patients were released from the hospital two days after starting the treatment and experienced full recoveries within three to five days. The inexpensive medication is inhaled once a day for five days. It directly targets the lungs with CD24 enriched exosomes meant to fight the cytokine storm or the immune system's overreaction to the virus, which is associated with many of the world's COVID-19 deaths. The hospital has requested permission to extend the drug trial to more patients. That concludes the news portion of our show. 
Stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here in our beautiful studio in Jerusalem. My guest today is Nitsana Darshan Leitner. She is the president of Shurat Adim. Nitsana, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Josh. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about what is Shurat Adim. Shurat Adim is a civil rights organization fight on behalf of the state of Israel in the legal uh, arena. We uh, fight terrorism in court, we fight BDS in court, we protect IDF soldiers from war crimes allegations, all uh, by international lawyers, jurists fighting for Israel. It's interesting, uh, on our show, uh, Israel Now News, we report about you quite uh, extensively. You've been the leading organization to fight the double standard against Israel. Why do you think in international law there is this double standard against Israel? Because international law is very vague. Uh, the uh, Geneva Convention was enacted after World War II and we didn't have situations like the Second World War again. Uh, today we're facing not uh, wars of military versus military, but military versus a terror organization. And then you can interpret this uh, international law the way you want. So those who are against Israel can come and say, no, 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 Israel is a bad. Like when they act against terror organization, they uh, uh, they kill innocent people, they, they harass them, they violate their right. But when it comes to the terror organization itself, you don't expect the terror organization to respect the international law, the law of war. So you have an um, um, unbalanced situation where states are not fighting states, they fight the fighting non-factor. And therefore, um, Europe can interpret the law against Israel. Um, obviously, the International Criminal Court can uh, go into this area, which, by the way, he doesn't have any jurisdiction, right? Israel is not a member in the court. Um, the Palestinian Authority is not a state to be recognized in the court. And yet, because it's so loose, because it's so, there are no case laws, there is no precedence, there are no regulations even, everybody can do sort of whatever they want. We see in, in places like the United Nations that it, it's just malicious. I mean, they're always accusing Israel of war crimes and humanitarian abuses, even though, you know, we're the only free democracy in the Middle East. They don't accuse North Korea or Iran or some of the big abusers. So most people have just thrown their hands up in the air, but you've actually taken them on uh, head first. What kind of success can we see against a battle in the UN where, where we're just outnumbered? UN is a different story because this one represents countries and when they have a majority against Israel, which usually is, uh, they go against Israel. So for instance, the uh, uh, Human Rights Council came up with a black list of Israeli corporations working in Judea and Samaria, uh, alleging that they are violating human Palestinian rights. Um, so what do you do against this uh, such a list? The purpose of this list is to spread it all over the world that these specific companies, 112, uh, will be boycotted, will be sanctions, nobody will want to work with them to alienate it. What we did is, uh, for the first time, uh, file a lawsuit against the UN. Fight a lawsuit against this uh, uh, UN Council coming and say you cannot really publish such a list because it's pure defamation. Um, working in an area of Judea and Samaria is not violating Palestinian rights. Uh, owning a factory in Judea and Samaria does not violate Palestinian rights. The opposite, um, the main plaintiff in the lawsuit is Rami Levy, is one of the major supermarkets in the area. They employ thousands of Palestinians, they give them full rights, they give them full compensations, they equal their uh, paycheck to the one that Israel gives, um, so you can't say they violate Palestinian rights. And the mere fact that they have a supermarket in Judea and Samaria also doesn't violate Palestinian rights. We filed a lawsuit, and um, uh, usually the UN has immunity. Uh, but uh, in this case, we think we can overcome the immunity because uh, we found that the list is Judenrein, has only Jewish companies no Arab companies, no uh, Druze companies, no Muslim companies. And when you co want to come and say Israeli companies are not allowed to work in these areas, you can't just say Jewish companies 
Well, I think that's what we're seeing all over the world. They're specifically targeting Jewish companies. Even with the EU regulations that came into effect, it's not that they're labeling both the Palestinians and the Jews or even the Arab Israelis. Only Jewish Israelis are labeled. So what can be done against the EU when they're also doing this Judenrein policy of labeling right. Jews goods? So you have to be smart when you go and take legal actions because you don't want to lose. And um, uh, although it's a great way to raise public opinion and to uh, shed a light on the whole bias uh, thing, you still have to take your uh, steps uh, culturally. So against the EU, EU uh, not much you can do. The EU uh, has immunity. The uh, countries who are member in the European Union have immunity. Um, the European Court of Justice, if you bring a case uh, uh, to defend Israel in this court, rest assured you will lose. Um, so unfortunately, in the EU, uh, you won't take legal steps. You will try to take diplomatic steps, like the uh, foreign minister is doing in Israel. You will try to uh, raise public awareness or some type of campaign. But listen, the EU is not fond of Israel, and you just have to accept this fact. Well, you brought up the International Court in Europe, the ICC, and that they're trying to overstep their uh, limitations on, on going after Israel. Why are they doing something that's not even in their portfolio just to go after Israel? Absolutely. It doesn't really make sense. You know what? They did it after just uh, recently they uh, dismissed the case in China uh, for violating the, uh, for massacring actually the uh, uh, Muslim population in China because China is not a member in the International Criminal Court because they don't have jurisdiction. But when it comes to Israel, it's fine. Even though Israel is not a member in the court, even though the Palestinian Authority are not a state member, yet they decide to dive in and to investigate Israel. And I can tell you, Josh, um, we can laugh about it, but in the end, uh, if they decide to start an investigation against Israel, that will be a game changer because Right now, they're checking two allegations. They want to check two allegations. One is that the IDF soldiers are using excessive force against Palestinians, which violates human rights. And the other one is the settlements in Judea and Samaria that are against international law. And Israel can come and, and, and say, and they don't do that, that they are not members in the court and there is their own jurisdiction, but the court does, as we said in the beginning, whatever they want. They will start an investigation. And they will not investigate Israel as a state. They will investigate individuals, soldiers, officers, officials. They will demand Israel to extradite these officers to the court. Israel will refuse, and there will be arrest warrants against the soldiers and officers. These uh, young men will be arrested in airports uh, in Europe and other states which are members in the International Criminal Court. Uh, Israel will be under sanctions and we will boycott to put pressure on it to collaborate with the court. Um, this is one of the biggest threats. It just sounds like state-sanctioned state anti-Semitism. Uh, you know, Sharad Adim has been around for a while. You've had some major victories. Tell us about your biggest victory to date. Well, we recently won uh, a lien for half a billion shekels in Israel in a case that was filed on behalf of uh, 15 families um, that were a uh, they have victims killed or injured uh, during the uh, Second Intifada. Uh, the court came and ruled that the Palestinian Authority is responsible for terror attacks done by Hamas, by Islamic Jihad, by PLO, obviously by officials of the Palestinian Authority, and gave us the judgment. And now we just put a lien on this sort of money. Uh, and uh, parallel in the United States, we won also a huge victory against the PA for $655 million that we are litigating now in court. Our organization was able to seize Iranian assets on behalf of victims. We uh, um, have judgments against Iran, against Syria, against North Korea, and we collect some of these judgments by putting lien on the assets that belong to these countries, and we're able to sell them in the free market and give the money to the terror victims. I'm talking about bank accounts, I'm talking about assets, buildings. Um, so, so far we were able to uh, get $2 billion in judgment and collect $300 million out of this judgment. It's not, there are literally tens of millions of people watching this show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? Israel needs uh, any support they can get. Uh, I just call you all to uh, come and join Shurat Adin, Israel Law Center. Go on our website, go on our Facebook page, join us, support us. 
Um, it will be a big, long battle, but in the end, Israel has to win, and we are the legal arm for Israel in the courts around the world. Thank you, Nitana, for being on the show, and thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. Up next, the return to Zion with Karen Hayasod. Shalom and welcome to the Return to Zion with Karen Hayesod. I'm Sam Grundwerg, World Chairman of Karen Hayesod, the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. Even before the creation of the State of Israel, Karen Hayesod worked with the Friends of Israel to bring home our sons and daughters. Watch this amazing story about how together we saved the Jewish community from Iraq. In 1947, the United Nations took a historic vote to establish a Jewish state. But Jews who had lived peacefully for centuries in neighboring Arab countries became a target for violent retribution, especially the 150,000 proud Jews of Iraq. In response, the Zionist movement launched its most daring operation. Shlomo Hillel, who would later become an Israeli government minister and world chairman of Karen Hayasod UIA, was recruited to plan an operation which would save Iraqi Jews and bring them back to their ancient homeland. שיוצא מבגדד, מצד אחד יש בו שדה התעופה, מצד שני מחנה צבאי גדול. כלומר, כשאני פה צריך להיזהר מאוד, יש גדר בכל שדה התעופה. אז ראינו באיזה מקום שהגדר קצת חלשה. באמת מגיע המטוס, מתחיל להניע את הפרופלורים ברעש נורא והיום, מדליק את הפרוז'קטורים כדי לעבר את, ה- את המגדל הפיקוח שבתוך שדה התעופה. The pilots then took off and aimed the nose of their Curtis Commando aircraft westward, home to Zion. אני רואה את הכנרת, כחול, ואני כבר רואה מרחוק את יבניאל, ורואה שתי מדורות, ואז ישר הטייס, בלי לעשות סיבובים, בין שתי המדורות האלה נוחת. Within minutes, the new immigrants had been spirited away to local communities, many pioneered by Karen Hayasod to begin their new lives in the home of their ancestors. From 1951 to 1952, around 120,000 were flown to Israel in operations Ezra and Nehemiah, named after the biblical prophets of ancient Babylon. With the help of Karen Hayasod, these immigrants built new lives. They became leaders of Israeli industry, politics, and the military. Operation Michaelberg also demonstrated that Jews would return to Zion, whatever the circumstances. As the Jewish state celebrates its 70th year, Israel can be proud that time and again, it has plucked Jews from danger to safety. All of this can be tracked back to Shlomo Hillel and two brave American pilots. Today, 
Many more Jews dream of returning to their homelands to play their own part in the miracle which is the State of Israel. Karen Hayasod is at the heart of these efforts. Jeremiah promised, your children will return to their borders. Let's bless Israel together. Now's the time for you to get involved. Assist Karen Hayasod to raise the necessary funds in order to bring Jews yearning for their homeland back to Israel. Your donation can help fulfill the biblical prophecy today. To donate and get information, visit our website at www.khisrael.org. Congratulations, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris on your historic inauguration. President Biden, you and I have had a warm personal friendship going back many decades. I look forward to working with you to further strengthen the U.S.-Israel alliance, to continue expanding peace between Israel and the Arab world, and to confront common challenges, chief among them the threat posed by Iran. I wish you the greatest success. God bless the United States of America. God bless Israel. The biblical prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. The people of Israel are returning to the promised land after 2,000 years of exile. But millions of Jews are still longing to come home. Bless Israel by supporting Karen Hayasod United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the state of Israel. Together, we can fulfill the prophecy of the Bible. Let's bless Israel together. To donate and get information, visit khisrael.org. When the ICC investigates Israel for fake war crimes, this is pure anti-Semitism. The court established to prevent atrocities like the Nazi Holocaust against the Jewish people is now targeting the one state of the Jewish people. First, it outrageously claims that when Jews live in our homeland, this is a war crime. Second, it claims that when democratic Israel defends itself against terrorists who murder our children, rocket our cities, we're committing another war crime. Yet the ICC refuses to investigate brutal dictatorships like Iran and Syria, who commit horrific atrocities almost daily. As Prime Minister of Israel, I assure you, we will fight this perversion of justice with all our might. The biblical prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. The people of Israel are returning to the promised land after 2,000 years of exile. But millions of Jews are still longing to come home. Bless Israel by supporting Karen Hayasod United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the state of Israel. Together, we can fulfill the prophecy of the Bible. Let's bless Israel together. To donate and get information, visit khisrael.org. That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rom. And I'm Sharon Weinstein, reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Please join us again next week for all your Israel updates.